Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. I stole your stuff, so we are okay. Good to go. Tucked under the flap of this bedroll is a relic of some kind. A small cone shell trying with seaweed. And we are not gonna talk to you because you are Bucker's uh, character. And those usually have a lot of fluff text that we do not at all need for our adventure. Oh, another web. Oh, multiple lions. Uh, well, that is quite pretty. Oh my goodness, you are also dying. And this is the... Oh, it's a lioness. Harp, harvest, hatchet. Waves are roughly chiseled in stone. They grasp at ondras below the moon like curving, curling fingers. Mm. Wait, do you have any idea where we need to go or. Okay, some cliffs. I, we don't have any cliffs here that overlook water. Maybe there will be something at LD1 bridge. Mm, we can, I think they can go there. Oh, it, it is actually a walking bridge. Welcome to Defiance Bay, but who chooses from the city? Understand? Yep. Okay, and this is this is it. Defiance Bay. The city at the heart of the Deerwoods Revolution now seems on the brink of another. Refugees line the streets, homeless and hungry, displaced by White One's legacy, hoping for relief within the city walls and finding none. Dissidents congregate to protest and to heckle, calling for an end to animancy and the ouster of their duke. The city's militiamen cast fearful looks as they patrol the streets, their hands trembling at the hilts of their weapons. The capital of a country that had not long ago incinerated a god now appears to be a spark away from sharing the deity's fate. Don't worry, I will not help you at all. Probably. Hello, kitty. Those walls surround the whole city. Protesters, justiciers. Hmm. We can't walk onto the walls, unfortunately. Uh, how much is done in two hours? One day, okay. Two days and some hours, I meant to say. We can enter here. Actress, Patreon. The steel girl's belt is thick with dust and moths. The plug below the beast reads, Maiden Falls 2682. Arrow of Levi looks on enigmati enigmatically from the canvas. Let's talk with you first. Hail, traveler. The belt the man behind the bar is nearly the size of an Omoa. A handle protrudes from his back, and his face is set in a stoic frown. Gives you a small nod. Here for a drink? There's a tiny pewter cup in front of him. He turns in it, it in one broad, broad hand, but doesn't drink from it. Hmm. This is a lively place. 
It was founded in the early days of the Rudian independence by a traveling scholar named Eero of Levi. He wanted a place where kith of all backgrounds could gather and hush out the issues facing their own their new country. He rests his elbows on the polished wood of the bar. It didn't take long for the place to fill up. Brackenbury aristocrats argued with dock workers on the gift while soldiers wrangled with politicians. The Woodians have never been known to turn down an argument. He takes a sip from a tiny cup. Hmm. What happened next? Soon, Kif were coming from the farms and settlements too. He waved at the door as if expecting a crowd to bustle in. This place got even more popular with the Valian sailors than the salty must, and that was the problem. He drains his cup. No matter what people say about fair-mindedness and civil debate, there's only so much people will to tolerate. Eero found himself on the wrong side of an argument with the wrong thing, and when he disappeared a few days later, some said it was the work of that thing. He shrugs, spreading his hands over the bar as he surveys the room. But Eero knew which way the wind was blowing. If you ask me, he skipped town. Hid out somewhere, hoping for rational minds to prevent in Defiance Bay. He cracks a right grin. <laughs> if only he could see it now. Tell me about yourself. Name's Bishop. Used to be a scholar of Berath. Now I run the Goose and Fox and keep the regulars in line. He shifts and you see a Warhammer strapped to his back. What more is to tell? How would you go from religion to taverns? The journey isn't as long as you would think. It started with Holoborn. And with this. He takes a black bottle from under the bar and fills the pewter cup. It was my sister's son. He takes a drink. At the beginning of Wade Wen's legacy, he was one of the first. I never expected there would be so many after him. Tragedy Tragedy is part of the cycle, but it's followed by rebirth. Yet every year, more parents were grieving for their whole-born children, and the gods were silent. The, what answers were you expecting? He leans forward, crossing his arms on the bar. Beraf promises rebirth, cycles, but the only cycle I found was this one. He taps the bar. Have a drink? Have another, and another, until I couldn't remember how I got home. Wake up, come back. I finally woke up one day to see my family had packed up and left. For all I know, they left days before and I just hadn't noticed. But they were gone. So I came here. I've cleaned up since then, not that I found my answers. He tosses the cup back. I've just stopped asking questions. I'll order some refreshments. Uh, of course, I'll sell you some of my stuff. No one is using hatches on my side. Well, we could use that. Mm -hmm. One handed, he's using two handed. Um. Yeah, Lula. Oh, that's so cute. Come on. Oh, maybe I can take as many as I have my... No, I have... I can only have... Six. Um... Of course, I keep a lot of stuff. Hatchet. Uh, 22... 23... This is basically the same. Nothing... Nothing... Okay. You only have food. Nothing else makes sense. Trade. Nice. And what about you? A woman sits by herself, spinning something on the table in front of her and watching it with furious intensity. It's about the size of a coin and it wobbles over a crack in the wood with a metallic rattle. She snatches it up with one hand and slams a half empty cup down on the table with the other. This! Is it a good time? What's that thing you're spinning? She glares at her closed fist. Something I need to get rid of. 
What are you doing here? She takes a long drain from her glass. Just trying to calm down and try to talk myself out of something foolish. Something foolish? She says nothing for a few moments, as if hoping you'll leave. At last, Kendra looks up at you, and the lamplight falls across her face. A purpling bruise is blossoming, ar blossoming around her cheekbone. There's something I need to give to my fiancé, Purnisk, only he doesn't seem to go anywhere without his new friends, and they're not exactly pleasant company. Who hit you? She shakes her head. I know how it looks, but you don't understand. It's not like Persnick, it's these new friends of his. They've brought out the worst in him. Tell me about those new friends. They've come into our house with their dead eyes and their black teeth. I'm not a fool, I know what it means. Pernists make me leave when they show up, but it's obvious what they can come to do. Last time they came, I told them to get out. Let them have their fun somewhere in the gift. But not under my roof. She scowls and then winces, her fingertips gently probing her bruise. Sveth changes you, I guess. The person I knew wouldn't have squashed a spider. I never thought he'd. She trails off, still feeling the swollen, discolored flesh. I thought Sven just made people lay around, not doing much. Kainra shrugs. I don't really know. Seemed better than believing he's always been this way. Maybe I could go talk to him. Her hand rests on the table and she clenches it into a white knuckled fist. There's nothing more to say to him. We're finished. I just want to give this back to him and have a clean break. She opens her hand and the ring clatters onto the table. It was his grandmother's. Even after this, I don't have the heart to sell it out, but if I go back there myself, I know what will happen. I lose my temper and I'll probably wind up with another one of these, she points to her bruise. I wouldn't normally hand this off to a stranger, but people say you've got a good heart. If you give this back to him, he'll know we're done. I'll take the ring to pressing then. She looks at you and nods. The house is just north of here. Please, just don't hurt him. As furious as I am, I don't want that on my conscience. Sure, I guess. A dwarf and an Orion debate philosophy on the other side of the curtain. This is a kitchen. I'm still not gonna steal. Yeah, I'm still not gonna steal from that. Just north of here, you said. Heritage Hill climbs on a curious soul. Please move along, I have long list to get through. Is this the house? Oh, that's so nice, we already have this whole map mapped out. Yep, this seems, this seems to be the house. First mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thing, there you are. Hail traveler. The man before you flashes you a toothy and rather unpleasant grin. Well now, a new face. Welcome, friend. Name's Pernis, and this, he gestured to the room around you, is my humble abode and place of business. And I do hope you're in here to do some business. He glances at the nearby card. What is your business exactly? If you have to ask. <laughs> Let's be clear. You go running to the cars, you're going to regret stepping foot in this place. In fact, I would put even odds on your regretting every decision you made in your life to leave you standing in front of me right now. His face shivers with a quick, unreadable emotion. But you stay smart, and I figure we're gonna end up very good friends. You can ask my uh, previous customers. 
the vault for my supply he grins i keep it simple if you have the coin i have the spell if you're free to make use of the premises so long as you don't do anything stupid and you don't get to tangling with the other customers now Bernice claps his hands together what can i get you what is seth you serious Bernie's eyes with suspicion and disbelief. It's Feth's worth every pound, my friend. It's incredible. Let's you see your own soul. And you're looking at the fine space first and foremost, Feth merchant. <laughs> right. Uh, Kenra asked me to give you this. Bernie takes the ring and turns it around in his fingers. Nice. What's this for? You don't recognize the wedding band you gave her. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see now. She's making a statement, is she? Good. Good readers to her. Sorry I haven't spent the coin to begin with. Now, is that all? She seemed to care for you. Why are you doing this? Plenty of stars in the sky. Tell her to go set it up in the salty mast if she's feeling lonely. <laughs> Me and her are done. It seems a difficult thing to forget, giving your grandmother's ring to someone. Maybe she's just not worth remembering, eh? <laughs> While well, you're playing lapdog for her and all, why don't you go back and tell her to keep clear of here? How do you hit your own fiancé? How can you live with yourself? She was asking for it. Sort of like you right now. Maybe you ought to quit being around in affairs that don't concern you. Me? I've got business to get back to. He points. Doors that way. Something's not right here. And I don't plan on leaving until I find out what's going on. Burning's eyes narrow. Then you won't be leaving at all, friend. I was tired of reading this face, anyhow. He raises his voice. Guards? To me. Oh, you see? Oh, fuck. First things first. Fireball. You start healing. Ready, uh, watcher. You, 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 one wounding shot. Is everyone fighting? I'm not quite sure. Uh, you do another fireball, but this time here. You keep hitting, you switch your weapon and hit him. I have no idea what's going on. I will be hitting you. Stop! Nerit staggers back, holding a bloody hand in front of him. I give up! Just leave and I'll go peacefully, alright? Too late. What the heck was that? And I... Uh, that's an honest question. Where are you? Ready, watcher. Um... Do this. I am on honesty. I am confused as who's who. Are you using this now? Uh, I think it was interrupted somehow. What the hell? Okay, um... You know what? Uh, use this one on him. I will use this one on him. Okay, you now go hit him. You go back. No. Oh, I screwed it up. Uh, I meant this. That was rather easy fight. Oh, grimoire. 
the squid that's going straight to you. And the rest will go to Stash. What? Yeah, Stash, definitely Stash. Yep. By the way, if I saw correctly, no. This book of Elan Love Sonnets has a dedication on the first page to a beloved Kayana. It's no trouble. Yep. There you go. Oh. Oh well. Someone has peeled the labels from these bottles. They're stuffed with a dark gunky, gunky pulp that gives off a pungent odor. The pots are crusted shut with some unidentifiable gunk. Yep, I see you guys. I should do something with this wool. Fox! God damn it. With this fox running first into the fight. Rusty Bronski. Okay. Oh, there was a book. Scarcely a decade ago, on the Even Dure Bridge, seven men and five women fought valiantly to protect their homeland. They volunteered for the mission, knowing it was up to them and them alone to prevent Saint Wadewin from crossing the bridge. They succeeded, even though they lost all but four of their number in the battle, and Wade Wen was on the bridge when the cut hammer den detonated. The final four were lost in blast, as well their sacrifice a testament to their dedication. The dozens, a group ostensibly formed for the protection of the Deerwood, was founded in the honor of those men and women. Indeed, those 12 men and women were posthumously regarded by the dozens as their true founders. Initially, the group dedicated itself to protecting the route from invasion, patrolling the borders tirelessly in search of Red Siren forces regrouping for another attack. When that attack never materialized, many of the dozens thought the next threat might come from Ephelsian loyalists living in the wood and began to turn their attention within. All new members of the dozens are required to swear an oath to remember the sacrifice of their founders and remain vigilant against Red Seras and any followers of Eothas. To this end, worshippers of Eothas are routinely harassed by the dozens. The mindset of this group may be hard for some to understand, as any fanatical devotion can sometimes overshadow the ideals. But the original dozen knowingly sacrificed their lives for their wood. From the dozen's perspective, how can new members of the dozens be any less committed to their country's welfare? What better way could there be to honor their founders? The dozens are not a large group, but what they lack in size, they make up in fervent devotion to their cause and a gift for gaining the ear of commoners. This makes them a force to be reckoned with, and there is no more influential group in shaping the discourse surrounding Wade Wynn's legacy. A small but very vocal minority of extremists in the group are calling for a new war with Red Seras. Talk of purging the Deerwood of all followers of Eothas is also being touted. More recently, they have begun to see in the practice of animancy a possible cause to the legacy, and they have taken to the streets of Defiance Bay and the dirt roads of many distant settlements to make their case to the general public. Some points to this as one of source of a recent surge in vigilantism and violence in the country. Anything else here? Belmy stands in front of the drink tray. Dumb is picking up small metal box next to the brandy. What could possibly convince him to... Yep, we've done that. I think. Okay. Yay, hey, but it's about... Uh, drag dragging someone with death. It appears as though someone rummaged through this uneven row of books in a hurry. 
These jars are chipped and cracked as if knocked to the ground and set back in place. The sun does not set on the Iranian language. Those of us who commune with this proud language, or some derivation of it, populate every corner of Eora. Most of us who speak this wonderful tongue know it as Adrian, but scholars and those obsessed with correctness often qualify it as modern or contemporary Adrian. This is to contrast the language you and I speak today with Eld Adrian, the old elven language that was spoken in the Adrian Empire back before the pioneer settlers of the Dude built their longships. If Eld Adrian could be considered the mother of the living Adrian, the language of Hillspeak could be seen as Adrian's cousin. Hillspeak is fading from common use, but many of the elves, especially the old one, in the Adrian Hartland still use this dialect. Whether you know it or not, if you can read th these words, you can understand Hillspeak. It is almost identical to Adrian, but includes a large vocabulary vocabulary of archaic words that have fallen out of use in today's Adirian. When you hear bards sing old Adirian poems, there are often lines of chorus that sound like melodic nonsense inserted to complete rhymes. These are usually instances of words that are lost from well our common language, but still used in Hillspeak. While Hillspeak is familiar to speakers of so-called modern Adirian, the same cannot be said of our language's predecessor. Eld Adirian is dead language, spoken by academics but not used in any major community. Eld Adirian words are often familiar to Adirian readers, uh, but the words are use orthography that has since been updated. Unfamiliar accents marks abound. For example, Eld Adirian contains some diphthongs that have no place in the modern Adirian, as well as a few tricky consonants clusters. Ia creates an ia sound that sounds that like the colloquial salutation here. Io sounds like eu. This sounds is still used in the modern world your. E is pronounced as e, such as in the rave. U and do both create long u sounds as in loop. Y sounds like an e sounds as in b. G G sounds like the consonant Y as in U. SC sounds like sh, so pronounce cop like shop. CG sounds like the gear, J, end of the words like head. It is uncommon for given names of Adrians, the Rudians, and the Red Serans to come from Eld Adrians. Some examples Aldwin is pronounced Alduin because of the long vowel sounds on the Y. Durnis is pronounced Durnish, since the final SC cluster sounds like an ESH sound. Uh, Yestr is pronounced Yestr on account of the G, G consonant cluster. Selgr is pronounced like Sledge. Tyrsk is pron pronounced Fierce. Uskrim is Ushgrim and not Uskrim. Ing Ingmar is pronounced Ingmar, leading the vowel sound. Did you know that? <laughs> How much of a language you can learn? One side of the overturned maze is plotted with crimson. Someone has gathered sheets and towels in the makeshift bed. The rumpled fabric is stiff with blood and in washed sweat. A man lies, bound and bloodied on the floor before you. His face is a tapestry of bruises, and blood is spl spattered across several corners of the room. The man cringes and sobs as you approach. Gods, please, please, no more. I can't take any more. I'm not here to hurt you. The man pauses, gazing up at you. Y y you're not? Oh, praise Berath, you're not one of his men, are you? He glances nervously behind you. I... He shakes his head. Please, I don't know who you are, but my name is Pernisk. This is my house. You have to help me. Then who was that downstairs? Uh, an impostor, some wizard named Nirid. 
he came into my house, tied me up in here, t t tortured me, and now, now he and his men are eating my food, breaking my things, selling stuff inside my own house. He blinked. Whatever you're holding back, spit it out, or I'll. Pff no, uh, I won't be that aggressive. He just turned up all of a sudden. Promise looks away, unable to meet your gaze. I may have hung on a tiny portion of my supplier's share, but I needed that money. What exactly happened? He sent over the wizard near it, the man downstairs. Burnis shudders to make up the lost copper, I guess, and to hurt me while he was at it. It feels like it's been days. Hold still, I'll get you free. No, no, wait, Burning says, his eyes wide with panic. I can't go out. Not while there, he's downstairs. He's... I've been tied up for the gods know how long. Please, you have to kill him. He's already taken care of. Burning stares at you. I can't believe this nightmare is finally over. He grins quickly, then seems to remember something. You have no idea what you've done for me, but... He looks up at you up at you and away again. I need to find my love, Kiranara. Um, uh, after whatever Nirid put her through, I'm afraid she won't give me a chance to explain. But she might listen to you. Please, she must be somewhere in Copper Lane. It's the only home she's known. And please, don't tell her about this path. About what I do. I, I could make it worth your while. A discount, maybe. Kenra sent me here in the first place. She did? Thornisk smiles brightly. That woman helped save my life without realizing it. Please, bring her home and tell her that everything is back to normal. I will talk to her. I can thank you enough, truly. How I've missed my poor Kenra. Mm-hmm. That's it. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Chill, but it still leave you as a dealer, and I do not like that. Hm. Not for taking care of those addicts as well. Seth. Okay, but let's deal with this. Uh, let's talk with Ken. But for which side? The one that blew up my guy. I didn't mean anything by it. I imagine a man with a head made of fire and light could be very convincing. Funny thing about Dear Woodens. With all that fire and light, they just treated him like another authority figure. Hmm. Let's see if she is still in here. Kenra looks up at you as you approach. What happened with Burnisk? Did you give him the ring? Burnisk was being impersonated by a powerful wizard. However, the real Burnisk also deals theft. She blinks at you, stunned. I have no idea. Burnisk, he. She brings her fist down on the table, sloshing her drink. Damn it! How can I trust him after something like this? That he's lied to me for this long? She runs her hand through her hair and takes a deep breath. I should just be glad I found out about this before the wedding. I'm sorry it turned out like this. So am I, but thank you for telling me the truth. Oh, and take this. She unclasps something on her neck. Pick it up from one of the merchants to help me stand firm in my decision. I'll be fine without it now. Unwavering resolve. Hmm. Okay, and with that, I am gonna end this part here. So, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.